Bonjour. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Brian. <laughs> and I'm Michelle. <laughs> and we are cruising with the Colmans. <laughs> oh, we are trying very poorly, but sincerely at our French. But in a couple of days, we're going to be in Italy, and hopefully, the Italian we've been working on is better. It's I not don't any know. better. It's not. We try. Sincerely. All right. So here Switching we are. Switching it up a little today. Yeah, I, I'm kind of surprised that we're doing this already, but uh, it's day three and we're taking a train. Uh, first, it is the most difficult, um, technically, the most difficult section of the entire Via Francigena. Lots of rocks, very and slick, very steep. Despite what you see right now, it's 11 a.m., but this morning when we had to leave, it was pouring down rain and there's supposed to be more storms coming in later this morning early afternoon so we had to make the call do we walk it even though those rocks are gonna be really slippery because we'll do it I mean we've done the craziest hikes in Glacier National Park and Zion we would do it but do we try it or do we chance it the the tip tipping factor was I'm dealing with some shin splints I know it's only day three and I'm dealing with them. Uh, I think I figured out the problem. We got, I had some different arches made and I think they just weren't working. Fortunately, I brought my old ones with me. So I put those in my feet. I've got compression socks on, I've got KT tape. I've been massaging and icing and doing all the things. So I'm hoping that with a little bit of rest yesterday and today, we're gonna be back on track, literally on track. <laughs> You're hot. I know my glasses are steaming up. <laughs> it's very humid here and it getting is. warmer by the minute, which is a, it's refreshing. But uh, all right, so yeah. we're, we'll show you some beautiful views of the valley and the mountains from our train. Yeah, we've got and, some. We still have two big days of climbing that I'm hoping we're going to be. Up and for. Uh, we'll see what trouble we can get into when we get to Osiris. Will it involve wine? I'm sure it will. Yes, stay I like tuned. This guy. Bonjour. Hello. <laughs> it's raining still. Still. We're so still in good spirits though, right? We are here in Osiris. <laughs> uh, we got in like at 1230 and have been kind of hanging out in the room for most of the afternoon. Michelle got a bunch of work done. I got a bunch of work done, but most importantly, rested. Brian found me some ice. So I've been doing all the things, resting, but um, we want to show you a little bit of where we are. You can't see it. We did for a little bit today, but behind us is... It's back here over those peaks. Mount Blanc is... Somewhere back there. Somewhere right up in there. Like behind the peaks that you can see. The clouds moved in, so now you can't yeah. see it at all. We're staying at Hotel Terminus, and we got the pilgrim rate. So you can email them and get the pilgrim rate. We got a half board. You can also get a full board. Half board includes dinner tonight and breakfast tomorrow. Full board includes then lunch to take on. But there is a, a town halfway up. Lidas. So uh, we didn't get a full board because the plan is to stop and get some food. Because so. man, I don't necessarily want to sit down for a picnic in the rain. Well, and I don't want to carry the food. I'm <laughs> I'm trying to continue to cut things that I don't need. Which, I'll carry it in my belly. Sure. The rain has stopped. And Mount Blanc has reappeared. It has. It's so exciting. It's right back there. Point to it, Michelle. I'm there. It's way back there. It's the very back one. Yeah. I but mean, it's we... appeared. We've seen it. A, we've had a couple glimpses. I love that when it rains, when it stops raining, it totally clears out. But here's the coolest part about what we both just realized. We're in the middle. In the middle of all the Swiss. Well, not all of them, but in the Swiss Alps. Look. We're surrounded by mountains, Yeah, we're Brian. surrounded. 
and France is right over there, and Italy is right back there, <laughs> and it's like, it's just crazy. And Switzerland is everywhere, and oh, are we moving? Are we moving? Yeah, here? let's come on, let's move here. Ah. <laughs> don't, shh, don't tell our children, we're thinking about it. No, we're not. It's very cool. This is exciting. Come on. Bonjour! Good morning! It is day four on the Via Francigena and we have just left the village of Osiris. It is a beautiful day this morning for walking. So our goal, it's a five hour walk up to Borg St. Pierre. And our More goal, than a thousand meters of elevation. So that's 3,000 feet. The book says five hours. So our goal is to take a break halfway through make this happen in five hours so that we can beat the rain. And Will we are- Will it happen? I don't know. <laughs> we're at 4,000 feet of elevation to start with, so, and we're climbing the hill already. Can you hear, are we so, breathing heavy yet? <laughs> yeah, if we're breathing heavy, don't judge. Uh, we would have taken some video earlier as we were leaving the village, but right as we <laughs> left the Hotel Terminus, which is where your credit cards go to die, um, as we were leaving, the hotel is right at the train station, and a train led out full of an entire elementary school's worth of children taking the train to school. Along with all the kids coming down from the villages. Above. Above, so we had kids in every direction. Yeah. Which we we're not taking video in that case. Do not take video there. But we're climbing. Here we go. We're climbing. So the hiking trail goes up that way. The VS goes that way. I guess I'm glad we're not hiking. Wah, wah. I don't know. <laughs> We've been walking for about an hour and 45 minutes. Yes. We're about four kilometers into our walk. We've got 14 kilometers to go and- Behind us is where we're heading. Yeah. <laughs> we're facing downhill right now. It's not been bad though. Uh, you can see behind us, it's a gravel road and that's what the walk's been so far. And it's pretty gradual. Um, it's not been any more steep than it is right here for the most part. Yeah, I think we've had one car pass us. A person who's out exercising on this, like, I just want to say- Not for her morning stroll. More props to you. Cause if I lived here, I'd want to be able to do that. But our view down below is what's made us stop right yeah. now because we can see where we came from, yeah. which is the village of Osiris. So just take in, don't just take in the village, take in all the mountains around. Yeah. We are surrounded. But down below, if you can see the train tracks running right through the middle of town, there's a little building. That little building is the train station. Our hotel was right next door to it. So that's where we started today. It's been Oy. switchbacks all the way up here, which um, has been nice because we've been in um, some countries where we walk straight up. So the switchbacks have actually helped a lot. If I were in Italy right now, I'd say mamma mia. <laughs> I don't know what I should say in French, but <laughs> mamma mia. Magnifique. <laughs> yeah. Magnif Man magnifique. Dang it. Très oh. magnifique. There you go. See, I always have to lean on him. There you go. If you were going to Google Swiss Alps, isn't this what you would expect to see in the photo? We are six miles in. No, six miles to, to go. go. Out of how many miles? I don't know. I think we started about was, nine miles to start. 14 kilometers. I don't know. Listen to the sounds. Those are not wind chimes. They are the cows with the traditional gigantic Swiss Alp bells. Happy cows. Happy cows. And I got to tell you, I'm so sorry, but no video that we're showing you shows how magnificent this is. Just the smells of all the wildflowers. The wildflowers are amazing. The smell of all the cows. The houses, the views. I mean- And this is probably the first wow. really clear view of our valley that we've had. Unfortunately, I see a lot of snow and clouds, but I don't care because I am so happy. It's amazing. Did I mention that? And honestly, the walk has not been too bad I so I mean, we far. have some points that it's really steep, um, Every now and then. But like right now, we're heading onto a flat um, road for a minute. Shh, so. Don't scare it away. I know. I know. But honestly, the beauty outranks anything. We're going to have some tough times, but you got to pause when you're doing an adventure like this and appreciate. I think that's life, right? No matter how hard it is, you have to pause and just appreciate how beautiful what you have is. 
we have some we have something pretty it's amazing enjoy the views and the sounds Immediately to the right of the tree that's center screen, you can see a little dark path, which is our trail. We've just climbed through six switchbacks Probably. from that at the riverside to where we are now. All those. And we're, we're not to the top yet. All those beautiful, like, Inclines, declines. All the things we said earlier. Right now. I take them back. So if it were um, raining, this would be even harder. Oh, this would be treacherous in the rain. Because it's slippery as it is, and you've got some pretty big drop-offs. So be mindful of that if it's raining, for sure. Which we're lucky it's not, because it's coming in. The views are amazing, though. I mean, yeah. You can't beat the views. We still get this. We just walked through a dairy farm. And now, switch back up. And then up. That red bench is where I'm going to To that the red pause. bench. <laughs> which I think might be a moment to take a break, but we're only about. <laughs> you drop that down the hill, I'm not going after it. We are walking out of Lidas. We just enjoyed a nice lunch. Oh, the pizzas. <laughs> so good. I uh, hope we're still saying that when we get to Rome. Um, we have a little less than 5K left to go and a thousand feet of climbing. This is a great little town, but there was only the restaurant, one restaurant open. I did see a grocery store. No, there was another restaurant, but it wasn't open. It wasn't open. There was a couple of places couple of to hotels. sleep. Um, but Look at the views behind us. Yeah, wow. and it's starting to sprinkle again. Yeah. So, gonna have to crack out those umbrellas soon. But it's been so nice, so nice. You gotta come, you gotta come. <laughs> <laughs> meters to Borg St. Pierre. That we are very tempted right now to whip out the phone and call that taxi. Big tease. But we are one mile away. It would take longer for him to get here. True. But instead we have cows on our ski lift. And our path follows the ski lift which is unfortunately not running either. Because let me tell you, I'd sit in that ski lift in about a half a second and ride my way up. Michelle stepped off the trail because yeah. we've come to a Via Francigena traffic jam. Fortunately, the cows apparently believe that pilgrims have the right of way. Bonsoir, Vaquet. Our path. 
There you go. Now for a special segment from the Vietnam Chijina. Pro tips for hikers. When crossing an electrified fence in the rain, be careful what you touch, right Michelle? Yeah, I got a I got a little little shock. It's raining, I have metal poles. There's a plastic piece. Oh hold on, sorry. Bad camera angle going uphill. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> See that plastic piece? Shut up. Oh. All right. On we go. 15 minutes left to go. The fog will lift when we get there, I'm sure. Hey, Brian, be careful. Hey. I hate it when he does something better than I do. No shocking! <laughs> we are at the Maison Saint Pierre. Very complicated, no instructions. Come on the door. Come up several flights of stairs. Put the code in, which we have to call to get. And it goes into the door right there. Yikes. And this is very much a traditional style albergue. So there are several rooms. This is a traditional bunk room has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beds. And then all. Private room, I think. Four beds. This room has one, two, three, four, five beds. Kitchen room. And it shows this room, which has three beds. And so we appear to be the only pilgrims here. No Wi Fi says talk to each other on the wall. You know what I want to say to that? I've been talking to him all day. What I need is my grandbaby videos. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No, it's fine. It's time um, to do some laundry and take showers, so the camera's got to go off. But yeah, we smell bad. Yeah. If you're wondering what a day in the life is like on pilgrimage, it's pretty basic. First of all, you get up and you eat. Then you walk and you eat and you walk some more. And then as soon as you get to your accommodation, you strip off all of your stinky clothes and shower and then hand wash your laundry. And I have already washed all of our clothes. So they're sitting here in the sink and it's a two part process. The first part is that I wring it out with my Michelle strength. <laughs> Her girly hands. <laughs> and um, I wring them out the best that I can. And then I just kind of hang on to them so that I can pass them on to Brian, who rings them out a little bit better. With my big, strong, manly hands. <laughs> and then we find either a drying rack or we bring a clothesline. So you've probably seen our clothesline or you'll see it Very in the future. Very creatively hung somewhere in the room. When there's a drying rack, we're very happy. There is one here today. So we'll put them on the drying rack. If we can put it outside on the drying rack, that's always a good thing. But that's really what this process is all about. On the Camino Francis, the albergues usually have clotheslines outdoors. Outside, but like on a day like today, you're not going to want to put your clothes out there. And so. we're mostly staying in hotels, so most yeah. of them kind of frown so. on hanging your clothes up outside. But it's, it's a luxury when there's a washing machine, and so you pick and choose what has to be washed. Some things get a second day because that's just life on pilgrimage. And then the last step is finding a spot to put your clothes out. Now, I'm using up more of this drying rack than you typically would. Uh, typically, if there's other people here, you want to use, you know, be conservative. Put your stuff together so that everyone has room, especially if there's only one drying rack. Because it's just us, I'm spreading it out. And we'll, we'll have to wring it out again, and so there'll be some moving around, so if anyone else comes, 
I'll move the gloves. There's also some hooks here that we could actually use too if need be. But that's it, and then after this, we go find food again. Because have I mentioned, eat, hike, eat, hike, do laundry, eat, sleep, do it again. <laughs> here at the church in Bourg St. Pierre, there's a column that was part of the original structure. I'll put the translation of the inscription in Latin down below. So in Spain, these are called landaverias, and the women would come and do laundry and catch up on all the latest gossip. We don't know what they're called here in Switzerland, but I can could certainly be called imagine. <laughs> I could certainly imagine back in the day doing laundry and catching up on all the latest gossip. The, the other, other thing. thing the other thing that we've seen a bunch of here in Bourg St. Pierre and haven't noticed so much before are these structures. And anyone who's walked the Camino de Santiago in Galicia would recognize this immediately, especially because at the bottom of each corner and at, on each pedestal, there's a round stone separating the foundation wood from the other wood. Now, again, we don't know 100% for sure, but they look a lot like the Horeos in Spain, which were grain and corn cribs to uh, keep the vermin out of the grain. You can see even bigger ones here. So, yeah, and this one right here go back. also has yeah. those round stones keeping the rodents out. Now, now that you've gotten a tour, we have to go back. Downhill? Downhill. Yeah, I haven't done downhill in a while.